Leon Fang, right? The CEO, he We're owns maybe <laughs> Leon Fang. He run, he owns maybe a little bit more than half the company allegedly, right? Um, is an extremely like Elon Jensen kind of figure where he's just like involved in everything, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so over that time period, he's gotten really in depth into AI. He actually has a bit of a like a. If you if you see some of his statements, a bit of an EAC vibe almost, right? Yeah. Total AGI vibes. And like, we need to do this. We need to make a new ecosystem of open AI. We need China to lead on this sort of ecosystem because historically the Western countries have led on the, on software ecosystems and in, he straight up acknowledges like in order to do this, we need to do something different. DeepSeek is his way of doing this. The, the, some of the translated interviews with him are So he fantastic. has done interviews? Yeah. You think he would do a Western interview or no? Or is there controls on there the There hasn't been one yet, but... Okay. I would right. try it. <laughs> well, I just got a Chinese translator, so it was great. This is this is all push. Um, so fascinating figure, engineer, pushing full on into AI, leveraging the success from the yeah, high frequency trading. Very direct quotes, like "We will not switch to closed source" when asked about oh. this stuff. He very long term motivated in how the ecosystem of AI should work and. I think from a Chinese perspective, he wants the Chinese company, a Chinese company to build this vision. And so this is sort of like the quote unquote visionary behind the company, right? This hedge fund still exists, right? This this quantitative firm. And so DeepSeek is the sort of at at you know, slowly he got turned to this full view of like AI, everything about this, right? But at some point it slowly maneuvered and he made DeepSeek. Um, and DeepSeek has done multiple models since then. They've acquired more and more GPUs. They share infrastructure with the fund, right? Um, and so, you know, there is no exact number of public GPU resources that they have. But besides this 10,000 GPUs that they bought in 2021, right? And they were fantastically profitable, right? And then this paper claims they did only 2,000 H800 GPUs, which are a restricted GPU that was previously allowed in China, but no longer allowed. And there's a new version, but it's basically NVIDIA's H100 for China, right? Um, and there's some restrictions on it specifically around the communications uh, sort of uh, speed, the, the interconnect speed, right? Which is why they had to do this crazy SM you know, scheduling stuff, right? So, so going back to that, right? It's like, this is obviously not true in terms of their total GPU count. Obvious available GPUs, but for this training run, you think 2000 is the correct number or no? So this is where it takes, um, you know, a significant amount of sort of like zoning in, right? Like, what do you call your training run, right? Do you count all of the research and ablations that you ran, right? Picking all this stuff because yes, you can do a YOLO run, but at some level you have to do the test at the small scale and then you have to do some test at medium scale before you go to a large scale. Right? Accepted practice is that for any given model that is a notable advancement, you're going to do two to four X compute of the full training run in experiments alone. So a lot of this compute that's being scaled up is probably used in large part at this time for research. Yeah, and research will, you know, research begets the new ideas that let you get huge efficiency. Right. Research gets you O one, like right. research gets you breakthroughs, and you need to bet on it. 